So let's dig some roots out right now, okay? There's some good shovels for it. I've got a couple in the car that I just sharpened too. I'm Todd Carnahan from the Habitat Acquisition Trust, established in 1996 to help people protect nature in this region. Uh, the way we do that is through stewardship projects like this one, land acquisition, as well as research and community education. I didn't realize it was so much fun. This was at one time a thriving Gary Oak, Gary Oak Meadow, and we'd sure like to see some restoration happen here and, um, and, and also use it as a, a teaching tool um, for our students. Drag her with you. What we've done yesterday with the students at S.J. Willis Alternative Education Center was to cut down a massive amount of the invasive Himalayan blackberry. And today, we're digging out the root of those blackberries to make sure that they don't grow back next year. Because what we're going to do is plant in some native shrubs and trees here that we would expect to have found here about 150 years ago. This whole area was covered in bra blackberry brambles, so just seeing how open and clear it is now is like amazing. It was basically to inspire students that they can make a difference no matter how small, uh, within their own backyard. Uh, so what better place to start than our own school grounds? All of the classrooms actually overlook these beautiful ancient Gary Oak trees. This is one of our demonstration projects, educating students outdoors through hands-on teaching to give them an opportunity to re-engage with nature and really enjoy themselves when they go to school. I thought this area was fine until I, re I was taught that the invasive blackberries were hurting the ecosystem here. And then I realized that it's really important to restore and help the environment. We've got a couple different programs within the one school. Um, I am part of the link, which is the distributive learning. So it's kind of like at a distance online learning. We also have continuing education, so adult learners, um, and also alternative education. So kind of all ages, all walks of life. Um, and these students have really come out and really supported this. Um, we can tell that they're really getting a really good sense of satisfaction over doing this work. Um, oftentimes they're just in the classroom and um, working on, you know, the computer or working on paper-based projects. So for them to have the opportunity to get outside and, um, and, and work with um, the land, you know, with their hands is just the best teaching tool possible. A lot of the teenagers, or my generation, have just gotten so lost in technology and so lost in everything else, they forget to pay attention to what's out the back door. It's like extremely important for all teenagers, or even anybody really, to actually look outside and figure out where you are and see what difference you can make. Well, it's recognized today that uh, students are suffering from a nature deficit disorder. Last Child in the Woods, for example, that book. But uh, what I know is that many of the teachers as well are suffering from the same disorder. So we need to reincorporate outdoor learning into our classrooms. Just thrilled to have people out here working in the rain, dedicated students, and um, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's one of those things that really um, uh, brings up the energy of, um, I think, any, any place that you are. I think working on the natural environment is uh, good for everybody involved. In order to try to regain some of the species and the variety and the beauty and the attractiveness of this place for birds and butterflies, we're going to put the species back in that those birds and butterflies are looking for. Well, I really enjoyed like cutting the roots and pulling them up because they're huge, you know, they're like these big thick roots with huge thorns on them and it's just really interesting to see like how bad it could get, you know, and how easy it is to fix it. We can replace those blackberries with native plants such as ocean spray, Indian plum, tall Oregon grape, and sword fern, species that will uh, diversify the landscape 
and create a little bit more of a, a mid-level structure here that's going to support a lot more of our local songbirds. So I have to rip up the roots that are growing around in a circle because I don't want them to continue growing in a circle. I want it to grow outwards into the native soil. So that one's ready to go in the ground. I'm going to make a hole that's just a little bit bigger than this size of this ball here. My mother worked on the Cowichan Preserve when I was a little girl and I used to help her pull broom when I was young. So it's, it's kind of natural for me to be wanting to help in a Gary Oak meadow here. It's just kind of what my family does. Ferns help to direct people in the right way. So we put it here and then it, it guides them into the pathway. I've always like been interested in the environment and helping it out. One of my main goals is to get that spark of curiosity going and to encourage it among the students that already have it. All students really benefit from some hands-on work. They can really get into it and, and really see that they can make a difference. We've only been doing this for about 48 hours now and we can already see what a huge difference we've made here. And I think that uh, they'll take that away with them and know in life that, that they are, they're able to make a big difference if they put their minds to it. Okay, let's use our feet. I have learned the importance of Gary Oak ecosystems and how there's very few left in Victoria. There's only 5% of the Gary Oak ecosystems left. So it's, mo it's extremely important to help the Gary Oak ecosystems that we have and especially it's extremely interesting too that there's one on the school I'm going to. Well digging a hole for this Indian plum shrub we found a camas bulb of the common camas and this is the uh, food lily for the native coastal Salish people for many hundreds of years. This rocky knoll really supports those open woodland and savanna type species. Very uh, uh, indicative of those are the camas, the fawn lilies, chocolate lilies, and the licorice fern as well. I just really enjoyed working with Hat to help clean up our backyard here at SG Willis. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I highly recommend to anybody who's a, a property owner in our region that with Gary Oaks and Douglas fir like this, perhaps a rocky outcrop or a little bit of the last of our ecosystem, Get a copy of my Gardening with Native Plants guide, available free from the Land Trust and downloadable from our website, hat.bc.ca. There and uh, make a little hole for that. And... students asking what's the next project, um, hoping to focus on the front uh, area of the school where there's a lot of really mature Gary Oak trees and hoping to plant some more native plants in the front as well. So they're definitely already looking in the future with this area and they're, they're taking it home and thinking what can I do in my own backyard. Good spot right there. I just think it's really important for future generations to help out and to make it nice for everyone and also for the school too. Um, and also it's just fairly interesting to, you know, get together with a group of people and help restore you know, the Gary Oaks. A big part of HAT's mandate is to engage the community in volunteer activities. A variety of the events include uh, working on a stream bed to, uh, to restore a stream bed for trout, uh, as, as well as working through a forest to eliminate invasive species like Daphne, planting at several schools, including this one. And uh, also we're working in the office on a regular basis. We need volunteers to help us operate the society on the long term as well. Rip it down to the center. Put it around the base of my new shrub. More mulch. Now it's happy. If people want to get involved with that, all they have to do is drop me a line at hatmail at hat.bc.ca or you can give us a call at 250-995-2428. To volunteer, very simple. We can get an email address and on a regular basis 
send out invitations to people to learn about ecological restoration throughout the region at various sites. Good job, guys. Good job.